Um, so here we are. I, I promised you that, you know, today's Thursday, we'd be back. We we're going to, uh, it's called rolling the trusses, uh, putting the roof on, putting the trusses in place, putting the, you know, bar barge on the outside, fascia on the ends, uh, over overhang plywood and sheeting the roof. That means putting the plywood on or OSB or whatever you're putting on the roof. <laughs> Let me talk about the order of events, just because I try to make, try to make things clear. Um, the, roof tr the trusses are up there, they're stacked up flat. On the top of this stack is the gable truss for this end. I explained last time that it's a gable truss because it's studded in. It has uh, wood members in there where I'm going to nail the sheeting onto. It does not have the, the webs in there that create strength for the truss. It doesn't need any strength, it sits on the outside wall. That truss, the outside of that inch and a half wide truss will sit on the flush with the outside of the framing of this end wall. Uh, it's going to stand up, it's going to be sheeted with plywood, it is going to get lookouts on it. And what lookouts are, they sit flat across the top of the, tr they don't sit across the top of the truss, they are cut into the truss, but they, they go from the first truss in, over the gable truss, and extend out to hold up the, the barge board. In this case, it's a one foot overhang. You know, I will get that truss over here in position an inch and a half back from the outside of the wall. That's where I want to nail it down. I'm going to angle those toenails just like I did for the wall so that when it uh, gets stood up, it pivots right into position and will be flush with the outside. More, more, more. Back to you. Okay, so we've got this up here. I've nailed it down in position like I explained. Uh, one foot flat hanging out there three foot or so hanging out here. Uh, now I'm going to come down and we'll support this in a couple places because I'm going to have to be walking on this, nailing the sheeting on and whatnot. I took a measurement uh, while I'm up here uh, for the longest point of this uh, truss. I'll cut the sheets, I'll get them, I mean I can cut all of them with this one measurement. From the very top to the bottom of the bottom cord, I want it hanging below this a half inch that allows me to nail it into that uh, top plate the cap plate for this wall and that's how things get really strong um, you know I talked before or I have talked about you know all the loads in a home are required to transmit all the way down to the foundation and that's what that does when when this sheeting on the gable is nailed into this cap plate and this sheeting on the wall is nailed into that cap plate. They're tied together. This sheeting here in the, in the wall then goes all the way down to the pressure treated plate that's bolted onto the foundation. Therefore, whatever's nailed to this top cord is connected to the foundation. That's the way that works. It's a load path, they call that. Uh, you know, we talk about earthquake resistance or uplift, you know, wind, um, any other kind of forces you can imagine all have to be um, transmitted to the foundation and that's why we build foundations the way we do because all the loads are transmitted to them. So Austin's up there nailing the sheeting on the gable. I'm cutting the pieces down here. Uh, they're never going to get as nice and flat as usually when they're in the stack. This is I want the rough side of the sheet to be out uh, or up when it's laying down. You can see the lines on here. That's a good indication of the side that you should be putting the nails into. These uh, nail lines, you know, nail line at 16, 32, uh, that's the field nailing that you're required to do. Obviously, you nail around the edges, and then you need to know where the intermediate supports are, or the you know studs in the wall. And I'm going to go ahead and cut all of the sheets for this side. So when we go to sheet this gable, nobody's waiting to, for the sheets. They're already done. They'll be sitting out here. Just grab them and go. By the way, I took the you want to pan over here. This is the tallest sheet in the middle. Here's the sheet at the very end. 
already knew what it was. It was the cutoff off of that sheet. Um, so that I can run these lookouts out. And you've seen them all over houses. These are the boards that stick out and hold up the edge of the roof. Um, the var drafter is going to be nailed into the end of those. And then it's going to extend into the, the next truss. Okay. Now I know this is where the gable truss is. This is the outside wall. Okay. This is the um, first truss end. I want, you know, roughly a one foot overhang. I want that overhang plywood to break in the middle of this gable truss, okay? From there, I want to go one foot, 12 inches. That is going to be the outside edge of the roof, okay? Um, that is going to be nailed into the uh, barge board. In this case, that is an inch and an eighth thick. So I'm going to come back in and mark that, okay? And that is the length I want to cut these. And I want to definitely mark where, you know, put replicate these marks on all of these lookouts. Okay, so now I need to figure out where to put these lookouts on this uh, gable, gable truss. So basically, these, this overhang plywood is going to run all the way from the fascia. The fascia is the board that uh, trims the end of the tails. It's what you nail your gutter onto. Fascia. Um, these one foot strips are going to start at the fascia and run up this gable and then uh, go back down the other side. Actually they both come back and forth. Pretty little feller. There. I'm going to come up uh, four feet, eight feet, twelve feet and that will be the center of where I put these lookouts because I you know I want that sheeting to break in the middle then I will notch them out we'll turn that on real quick and I'll show you what that notch looks like I'll have Austin start cutting you know uh, seven eight, eight of these at 32 and three eighths and putting the marks on okay so when I talked about market measuring these out so I'm hooking the top of this tail out there and I'm coming to four feet to the middle of one of these lookouts I marked that and I've cut myself a little block this is the easiest way to to mark these out versus measuring, you know, three and a half by inch and a half or whatever. Anyway, that 48 inch mark was the middle of this. So I came to the middle and I marked it all out. Now I'm gonna, I wanna go four feet uh, on center or four foot apart, you know, to be on center. But anyway, let me take down here, line this edge up with the edge of this and I marked eight, four, and in the very end. So there are four lookouts along here. And that up flush here. Use my eye, that's the best tool I got. Uh, mark that. And here's another one. Mark that. And then mark the very end. This is why you have to have this supported fairly well. Um, the gable here, because I'm, I'm no, um, light little uh, spring daisy and I could break this pretty easy. So, um, I've got my lookouts cut in here, do -ka -do -ka -do, all the way along. Um, this is <coughs> this is also, you know, this is my chance to save a little bit of time. If I could put these barge boards on the gable before we raise it, um, then that saves time down the road. Being on a ladder, I won't have to get out here on a ladder and do all that stuff, or do it from the roof, which is a little dangerous. Anyway, I'm just being smart. All those little things add up. Anyway, I cut the proper angle on the end of this board. It's going to be a miter cut. Um, Austin, I'll probably have you do it again because I want to show this cut. So it's beveled at the 6, you know, I put my speed screw on there at the 612 because it's heading down there and I want it to be a plumb cut. Go outside, Austin. And then um, I put it on a 45. I like to miter all these corners. It, it's a little harder. It looks the best, though. Um, and it's the strongest. It's the easiest to nail together and it won't fall apart. Now I'm going to slide this down flush with this top cord. I've got a little line on there. Austin's going to tell me 
just how far to run it out because this is four feet of real wiggly flat laying wood and I don't want to I don't want to break anything or myself and so it can't move uh, tack it up towards the top because that'll get covered with the uh, rake trim for the roof little piece of one by two or something or metal okay and then I can come up I've done the same thing on this side it's all tacked in place flush with the top now I'm going to move this up to where it also is flush with the top I don't want anything to move but I'm going to come right out this long, uh, long point intersection I'm going to mark myself a 612 mark on there which will be straight up and down when this is in position and I'm going to go ahead and um, I could even shift this up just a whisker but I'm going to go ahead and cut that with the saw set the depth so I don't cut too deep Uh, I'm going to mark where those lookouts are, just like I said I was going to. I can use my framing square here and mark, mark, then, you know, then we know exactly where it needs to go, or where the lookouts need to be nailed. One last thing I'll mention here in this little blip, uh, this is dangerous, we're up in the air, um, you know, certain things to keep I told Austin when he was up here, he hadn't done this a whole bunch, I said, do not walk backwards. You know, turn yourself around and, and walk along. Um, I put these layout marks on the top of this wall while the wall was laying down. Um, we had time to do it. And the main thing I was thinking of is when we built the other building next door, I did not do that. When it was time to put the, you know, set the trusses on there, I showed up a little early because I knew I needed to lay the walls out. Well, it was frozen up there. <laughs> and I wasn't gonna get up there and walk along a frozen wall. It's dumb enough to walk on a wall anyway, much less a froze, I mean, it had ice on it. So I had to move my ladder down the whole way and lay them out. It was really dumb and took forever. Getting this, this, this is pretty nice house wrap. It actually will stretch a little bit. Some of the, some of the stuff that's approved these days. I'm gonna tack it on, I'm tacking it on. You know, we're overhanging six inches onto the sheet of house wrap below, that's sort of the rule. Um, and then I'm nailing it up from the bottom of the truss because I'll want to fold that bottom edge back because remember I need to nail that, make that connection. Nail uh, one, you know, this sheeting into the lower sheeting. Okay, keep it fairly straight. Get it tacked down here at the bottom. Cool. Okay. On. House wrap is on. Uh, time to nail up this barge board. I know just where to nail it because I've got my marks. I'm just going to put two nails in one, each one. Or Austin got stung yesterday, and here's a swarm of bees coming through. Yeah, a swarm of bees. It's so weird. And they're all kind of right there, too. Inhibiting our progress now. Oh, well, they're not inhibiting our progress. <laughs> there were plenty of us here. We just shoved this thing up, and of course, it's nailed down properly so it wasn't going to fall over. I, I nailed the board to the outside of here so it would uh, bump into the wall below and not, you know, fall off. That's the way it's supposed to work. I need some kind of brace on there to hold this um, temporarily until we can do it the way we're supposed to do it. And I'll show you how that goes in a, in a little bit. But I don't know. It's up there. It's not falling over. Now we can, <clears throat> it'll go pretty quick to start rolling some of these trusses here. Uh, pretty much bring them to where they go, stand them up. We'll nail them into here. And then this is a little even more secure.